Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're a returning customer, welcome back. If you're a new viewer, I apologize in advance for my current language. Increasing your squat. We have some simple tips. There are more advanced tips that will come out in a later video, but just to keep it simple, increasing your squat can be a matter of, apparently, I wrote down seven things. So here we go. First, and this is a big one, and a lot of these will apply to beginners and intermediates. If you're advanced and you're watching this, I think in a week or so, we should probably have a video out right up your alley. One is standardize your technique. You wanna find a strong, comfortable technique, a solid walkout where you know exactly how many steps you're taking, and you wanna replicate it on all of your warm-up lifts and on your, on your actual working sets. The reason I say this is a lot of folks have told me in the past, like, hey, my squat is having some trouble. I watch them squat and kind of every rep looks a little different and not a little different, like enough different to where I'm like, oh, you made this mistake on this rep and that mistake on that rep. Every set looks different. If you can't get a standardized good technique, you can't even intellectually approach the problem with what's wrong with your squat because what's wrong with your squat is this like stochastic matrix that changes all the time. If you standardize a technique, you will allow your nervous system to start to replicate the same technique. And your nervous system is incredibly powerful at learning. And when it learns better how to do a movement, it becomes vastly more efficient at that movement. You're practicing how you play. All of a sudden, practice makes perfect, right? And you start playing better. So standardizing your technique to anything that's remotely good, sticking with that for a few weeks. Because like some people will walk a, a squat out, sometimes there'll be narrow stance, sometimes mid stance, sometimes wide. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Standardize that technique, practice that standard, your squat will improve if that's your issue. Number two, a lot of people will do lots of maximum work, sets of one, sets of two, a lot of max effort stuff. Oh, my computer just says, Lenovo says, congrats on your new device. Get started. Well, fuck, I am starting. I'm literally giving, a, I'm, I'm at work. Fuck. When I was setting this, uh, this new computer up, uh, by the way, my computer costs $400. How, how baller is that? Unbelievable time we live in. Um, when I was setting up my computer yesterday, it like literally clicked like, what do you use it for? And it's like gaming, porn, whatever. And I clicked the business one and now it's like literally kicking dicks out of my mouth at work. Unbelievable. A lot of people do max effort stuff, singles and stuff. And that's cool to show off and it really teaches you how to do singles really well. But after a while, it's not sufficiently voluminous. It's not enough practice at the movement for your muscles to grow very much or for your nervous system to get very good. On the other hand, some folks do higher repetitions, sets of five to 10, great for building muscle and sets of 10 to 15, sometimes even better for building muscle. They don't convert as well to what we in sports science call basic strength, just fundamental fucking core brutal strength. The way you get that is sets of three to six. So if you want your one rep max of squats to go up in within the next few weeks, do plenty of singles and stuff like that. That always works great. But if you want your squat to really go up a lot or a little bit of an investment in the next several months, sets of three to six are where it's at. Focus on those. Next, number three, squat more often. A lot of folks wonder why their squat won't come up, but they train squats one day a week. The thing is, this comedy from any other sport perspective, pick any sport, just think of a sport in your mind right now. It's volleyball, isn't it? You fucking perverts. Men's volleyball, that's what I was thinking of. In any case, how many volleyball players practice volleyball once a week? What? Like, that's not even recreational volleyball. That's just something you do on occasion. And these are complex movement patterns and, you know, they take a lot of practice. Squatting isn't exactly a complex movement pattern, but it's sufficiently complex that practicing it more than once a week yields marginal return on your investment. I say marginal because it's not going to revolutionize your squat. You're going to go from squatting 300 pounds for a max to squatting 600 pounds for a max just from adding another one, one session a week of frequency, but it will make a notable difference in most cases. Should it be two hard squat workouts a week? Maybe. But if you're doing one, I would say go to two. If you're doing two, I'd say go to three. Three plus, like four, five, six, there's a big fatigue trade-off. It's not super clear what's happening there, but certainly don't just squat once a week if you want your best squat. If you're squatting twice a week and it's really beating you up already and you don't think you can add another session, what you can do is take the volume of each workout, reduce it, take it from Monday and Thursday, move that one session to Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, but with a lower volume so you can recover between the days. And then Friday, you think, oh, it's too much for me to be squatting heavy, no worries. Put 50% of the normal weight you do, 
do just a few sets of triples with that light weight for technique. And that extra neural learning will mean your squat goes up and up and up over the weeks while your fatigue is managed. Give that a shot. Number four, doing the right accessories. A lot of guys will squat super hard. Good stuff. Then their accessories is like, I do leg extensions for three sets of 10 with a cigarette in my mouth because I'm barely even trying. <laughs> the gym the gym manager is like, sir, you can't actually smoke in here. Like, oh, it's Will Smith. And I don't light it. It's for the look. I just bite it. How many of you see Scott, the video guy's old as shit. So he caught that reference. He's giggling like a little fangirl over there. Who doesn't love Will Smith? Raise your hand. He'll slap you. Careful. In any case, the real accessories that work best are not leg extensions. They're a great choice. They're an option. But consider this. Ultra deep hack squats with a pause. Ultra deep leg presses with a pause. Front squats sometimes. High bar squats with your knees shooting real far forward, heels on the ground, narrow stance, brutal. That's the kind of accessory work that can really make a big impact. Give that a shot in the context of maintaining your weekly volume so that you don't overdo it. That might help a ton. All right, number five. Sometimes it's your quads that limit your squat, and I would say even often. But sometimes your knee extension ability, your quads are strong enough, but you end up cantilevering over on your way up and your back or your glutes or your hamstrings are insufficiently strong and you can't maintain that tight, dare I say, erect posture. It's actually what it's called. Oh, sports science. Always making us say the darndest things. That's a problem. Because if you fold over in your squat, it doesn't really fucking matter how strong your quads are because they don't judge the squat like they judge the good morning. However, if you do some good mornings, if you do some stiff-legged deadlifts, if you do some even deadlifts, your posterior chain can become so strong, it is no longer the limiting factor. And then you posterior chain once strong enough, essentially turns all of your squats into a leg press because the only limiting factor is your quads. And if you already have strong quads and you increase the strength of your posterior chain, your squat can shoot up like fucking wild. Give that a shot. If that's your problem, that might be a really awesome solution and will quite rapidly elevate your squat. Another one, number six, taking a page out of Mr. Louis Simmons's book, as much as it pains me to say that, JK, total respect. If you're squatting a lot and often and all the time and your squat's been going up but then it's stalled out, it might be that the movement has become stale. Anytime you repeat something way, way, way too much, your body just like gets tired of it and it won't increase that your abilities in that landscape anymore, in that space. So what you can do is strategically remove squatting and then slowly begin to reintroduce it again. So if your squat's really stale, like if your squat's not going up much and you've been squatting a lot and you're looking at the squat rack and you're like, fuck this, man, I don't want to be here anymore. Just kill me. And God's like, no problem, lightning. And you just absorb the shit. You're like, ha, ha, ha. And you lightning him back. And he's like, yo. And you're like, yo. And he's like, yo. And you're like, yo. And you're like, are we related? And he's like, yep, what's up, son? Technically, we're all God's children. In any case, if that doesn't happen, here's what you can do. Take squats out of your program for like a whole month, even, even two, four to eight weeks, your whole mesocycle, cycle, no squats at all. Hack squats, leg press, good mornings, stiff like another, leave all that good stuff in. Still training your legs, just not with squats. After a mesocycle cycle of not squatting, it's not going to feel stale anymore. You're going to come back to squats. You're going to be excited to come back to squats. They're going to feel fresh. Here's a really cool thing. You're going to have an opportunity to relearn squat technique a little bit, and you may actually improve it. You may find that you are doing some weird things just as a matter of habit that you're fresh to it. You don't have to do them anymore. You start with one squat session in that first mesocycle cycle back, and then you add another squat session or potentially even two squat sessions. So you're squatting three times a week again like you were back in the day when it got stale. That entire reintroduction process could see you elevate beyond your old squat. That refresher, that getting away from it is all you need. Like sometimes after a long week of super productive work, your brain is fried. Like he has like Friday at 4.59 p.m. You're looking at your spreadsheet and you're like, and your boss is like, hey, I'm going to go crash my Lambo into my wife. <sighs> see you later, right? And you're like, oh, shit, I'm at work still, right? You're not getting a whole lot done. Did I say crash into my wife? <laughs> your boss is crazy. I'd probably report him to the police. So if you've got too much work in the week, staying extra late that Friday night and just pouring coffee into your cup and then the coffee's flowing over your hand and on the printer, no good. Go home, weekend, tons of sleep, no work, relax, rest, recover, take a trip somewhere, come back, Monday, fresh and a little rusty. 
Tuesday, you're back in the grind. Wednesday, Thursday, you're innovating. Friday, you've uh, you know made your own drop shipping company. Saturday, you're your boss's boss. Entrepreneur, spelled wrong on Instagram, you're the fucking man or whoever you are. In any case, getting away from squats every now and again, a swell idea. Last one. This one's kind of a, I'm going to open a shot. Gain weight. Gain weight. You could be at a place where you're like four weighing 150 pounds. Your squat is fucking pretty sweet. And you could continue for several months and actually many years to get a little bit stronger, right? But you're 150 pounds and you squat 350 for a max. Like, that's really impressive. But you want to squat 405. Like, it's been a thing. Well, you know, you can squat 405 in like three or four years at 150, which would be awesome. Or you could squat it in three or four months if you just gain up to 165. At the end of the day, the number one determinant of strength, which is why we have weight classes in sport, is the amount of contractile tissue you have, the amount of muscle. And if you're pretty lean at whatever body weight, you just can't put on much more muscle because how the fuck does that work if we put the muscle on the body but it doesn't weigh anymore, violates at least a few laws of physics. So at some point, if you're pretty lean and pretty jacked and you want to get much stronger in your squat, you should be bigger legs, right? Google Charlie Jung. It'll autocorrect you because you'll inevitably spell Charlie with an E, but Charlie's parents are Korean, so they spelled his name wrong. And look at his legs. He squatted 800 pounds raw. And you look at his legs and you're going to be like, what the hell is wrong with his quads? Why are they this big? Well, that's kind of what it takes to squat 800, right? And if you want to squat something more than you squat now, kind of the most straightforward thing physiologically is to put on muscle mass. And the most straightforward way to do that is to gain weight. So yeah, eat up. Now, here's the thing. When you're gaining weight, do a lot of sets of five to 10 in the squat and in accessory work, because that's a really good way for people interested in strength to gain muscle. It is enough volume, but it converts really well. And then after a few months of that, you've gained a ton of weight. You've, your sets of five to 10 are skyrocketing in ability. Don't just go max out because your body's not ready for that shit yet. It's not neurologically adapted for singles or even lower reps. After that, do a few months of mostly sets of three to six reps in the squat and whatever you want in the assistant boom, it's going to still be five to 10. After a few months of that, your squat will very likely be revolutionized and be way stronger. You'll finally squat 405. You'll finally look over after you rack the weight. And that one guy, I said it, guy in the gym that you always just looked at and you were like, one day he's looking at you and he's like, I never thought anyone could squat that much weight at your delicious, tasty body weight. Dot, dot, dot. Hit the showers, fellas. See you guys next time.